Welcome to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial, the home for financial advice in a language you can understand. Created by Mark Friedman of Friedman Financial, he and his team of certified financial planner professionals will discuss timely topics that help individuals and families make smart financial decisions. And now, get ready for this week's edition of Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial. Welcome back to another edition of Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial. My name is Mark Friedman. And I'm Marion Gilman. And we're here to provide you with some financial advice in a language you can understand. You know, we, here we are, um, first week of October starting up. Fall's kicking in. Unbelievable. And you know what that means here at the office. It's, oh, we all know what that means at the office. It it's hot dog time. It's hot dog eating contest time. <laughs> it's Topsfield Fair time. The booth is open. Um, perhaps if you're seeing this podcast um, from the 4th of October to the 14th of October, we'd encourage you to swing down to the Topsfield Fair or swing up to the Topsfield Fair, depending upon which direction you're coming from. If you go there, 500,000 people will pass through the turnstiles this year. It's That's the, amazing. I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's the 206th showing of the Topsfield Fair. Wow. The oldest and longest running agricultural fair in the country. But what people come for is... The Benet Brith booth. Of course. It's where the probably what the, else? within the top three most popular booths at the fair. Lines at our concession stand uh, will serve all sorts of Jewish fair at the Topsfield Fair. If you swing by, come see me. Come see Laura. Actually, Jody and Christian are actually going to work at the booth on the 12th of October. So if you're there, come see them. We've got special treats for anybody who says that they watch the podcast. Well, so tell me, why is this the most popular booth there? Well... Or one of the most popular. People ones. say, well, first of all, we've been doing this booth since 1970. So 50, not Mark. Not, but... Well, I started um, sometime around 1980. I started working there. I think I was 13 wow. years old wow. when I started. Um, took a few years off, and then now Laura and I run the booth. So it's been going for 54 years now. That's but a while. It used to just be a little booth that sold hot dogs and pastrami sandwiches, but now. Um, people come for the Oyve sandwiches. Was probably the most popular sandwich. Certainly at our booth, we'll sell four or five hundred of them. What's in an Oyve, you might ask? It is a very large sandwich. Sure is. Yeah. It comes with um, homemade brisket, hot pastrami, a potato pancake, chili on a big bulky roll, and you get a half sour pickle to go along with it. So it's can, a big sandwich. Can anybody fit their mouth around that you know, sandwich? It, it's always fun <laughs> watching people try. They usually approach it with a fork and a knife. Um, but that's what you go to the fair for. It's Absolutely. always about the food at the fair. Absolutely. Lots of things to do there, so I hope we'll see you. But, you know... Well, wait a minute. When is the hot dog eating contest? Oh, oh That's the very that's important the big one. component. Yeah, the hot dog eating contest is Saturday, October 5th at 3 o'clock at the Tree and On Stage. Um, I will be emceeing it with um, Senate Minority Leader um, of Bruce Massachusetts, Tarr, right? Br uh, Bruce Tarr. He will be right. my co MC. We'll have 15 people up on the stage at the Tree and On Stage. Um, cons trying to consume as many quarter pound Hebrew National all beef hot dogs that they can in seven minutes. And they have to do the bun too, right? They have to eat the bun oh, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that's, around here. That's a it's lot of bun hot, and dog. hot dog. So you may be wondering, what are you wondering, Mary? I'm wondering how many people get sick. <laughs> oh, oh, well, there's that too. I wasn't even thinking that. Oops. Yes. People go to the hot dog eating contest for the train wreck, but some people actually do win. Somebody does win, actually, each year. The record right now is 10 hot dogs. Wow, that's hot. Those so that's, are big hot that's dogs. That's two and a These half pounds not, of hot dogs, yeah. Mary. The, the, two and a half pounds of hot dogs in seven minutes. Much more than I could eat, yeah. I will tell and you. And so, by the way, what do they win? The B'nai B'rith booth at the Top Shield Fair awards a check for $206 to this year's winner because it represents the 206th anniversary of the Top Shield Fair. Wow. You know, things like the Top Shield Fair are one of the simpler things in life, aren't they? They certainly are. It certainly is, I should say. And it's it's actually a great experience, particularly for young children who aren't familiar with, um, you know, the, the agricultural lifestyle. I mean, who who grows up with an agricultural lifestyle now? Not Cer many Certainly people. not up here in, in certainly New Certainly not around here. But yeah. here you get to pet chicks. You yeah. get to learn about horses and cows and goats and, and they have all these... Uh, and the giant pumpkin. The, oh, of course, the giant pumpkin. It is enormous. You know, kids dress up squashes and cucumbers and tomatoes. So and it's flower booths and all sorts of stuff. It's a great time. 
it really comes back to the simpler things. We don't have to make things too complicated. Right. You just go to the fair and say, you know, this is a simple way of life. And it makes me think about the topic that we wanted to discuss today, Marion. Keep about, it simple, stupid, right? Right. Keep, you the heard that K-I-S-S. Absolutely. So maybe you can explain to our viewers, Marion, um, about a podcast that you listen to. I know I do, yeah. too. Yeah. And you were telling me about a story, and I said, geez, that story sounds familiar. And it turns out we were listening to the same podcast. Right. It's an, you know, it's a very interesting story, and a couple of things came across our, um, you know, our desks this week that actually tied into this podcast. So this is a podcast by Morgan Housel. I know we've spoken about him a lot on this sure podcast because he is actually um, a very interesting financial writer, and he keeps things in everyday language. He's a great storyteller. And so we both listen to his podcast. He also writes a blog, so and we read that as well. And he's written a few books. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's written another book that's coming out next year. Really? I heard that on the podcast, too. All so right. So there you go. But anyways, the story he told on this podcast was fascinating. And he said, demographic historian T.H. Hollingsworth once published an analysis of the life expectancy of the British peerage, the upper class. It showed a very peculiar trend. Now get ready for the answer to this one. Yeah. Before the 1700s, now this was a while ago, the richest members of society had among the shortest lives. The shortest lives. Very different from what it is today. And those, those lives of the richest members of society were meaningfully below that of the overall population. So how could that be? I mean, how, see, what, what could... See, what could, see you think about this, because, yeah. you know, people say, you know, our life expectancy in America today is about 83 years of age. That's what yeah. that life expectancy right. is, right? And people say, well, the more affluent community you live in, the better the health care, the better the food, the better the living conditions, the better the education, likely the longer you're going to live. But and I the, do believe that's true. I believe I that's believe true it, today. Yes, exactly. But in the 1700s, the exactly. wealthier you, you were led to a shorter life expectancy. It makes no sense on the surface. However, he went on to explain. Do you want to sure, tell the, him what happened? The best explanation for this is that the rich were the only ones who could afford those quack medicines and sham doctors who would peddle hope, but they That's increased right. your odds of being poisoned. Exactly. So, you know, you didn't know what you were taking when you bought these potions. Right, but meet this person who's traveled from afar with his bottles full of wares and, and potions to help cure all your ailments. And for whatever, and for a cost, and, yeah. you could have access to this. And like the fountain of youth, you know, you could find this fountain of youth. They were selling water from the so, fountain of youth. So these quack medications and these sham doctors would peddle these potions and these tr treatments. Maybe it was eat this leaf from a tree, break a branch, whatever it is, and you could be cured, they would think. And, but the poor people couldn't afford this. They couldn't afford anything. So but how Mor does that relate to investing? Right, but Morgan Housel said, I bet, he bet his own money, good money, that the same thing happens today when it comes to investment advice. And at first we thought, is that a shot to us right. as investment advisors? But I want you to think a little further, and it's not. It's all of the newfangled stuff. The more complicated it gets, the more intriguing it might seem, yet is it best for you? And so, Marion, right. you and I attended this luncheon a couple days ago, and a gentleman mentioned a quote that triggered us to think about maybe this statement, that the quote that we're going to share with you, right. shares the sentiment of what Morgan Housel was thinking. Exactly, exactly. And what is that quote, Marion? And Marianne? that quote is that complexity makes you sound intelligent, but simplicity makes you money. So, so wait, say, say, say that again, just to be sure we get this right. Complexity Com makes you sound smart. Simplicity makes you money. So there think about go. this. The more, think about 
the success of a lot of these financial news shows right now, whether it's CNBC or CNN FN or Bloomberg or any of these companies. And these people are talking about option strategies and trading strategies and speculation and these cryptocurrencies and buying precious metals and, and doing land deals and all these types of things. Buy all, right strategies. Right. I mean, and crazy things. Buy Call now, options. sell later. You, right. see, you listen to all these commercials. In and, and out of the let market. Let me tell you about how much money I've made and I can show you this strategy too. But they're super complex. Right. Or I think the other thing that very wealthy people also fall for are these strategies that try to create um, tax benefits and we've seen those as well you know there are some things that are appropriate potentially but once they get very complex and once you go into these tax write-offs and all that becomes again another strategy that might never make you any money yeah, you know, one of the things that we've always focused on, look, we've been doing this, my dad started in 1968. Yeah. And we've always viewed ourselves as a very plain vanilla, conservative New England investment financial planning office. So Mark has a great expression as well about certain, in, about mutual funds investments. Ever since I started in this business, yep. 1992 I started in the business. And I would go around at conferences, and when you used to go to these financial services conferences, huge exhibit halls with hundreds and hundreds of different investment management companies, whether it was Putnam or Fidelity or Vanguard or State Street, whatever it was, there were so many of them. And, after, and all of these people are telling you why their mutual fund, why their investment strategy the best. is the best and why we need to include it in our clients' portfolios. And, you know, the differences were so subtle that only the you know, real smart people could distinguish right. this. And only their managers could do this strategy. And so it made me think about all of these people and all of these stories. And I ended up going to a due diligence meeting in Chicago, Illinois run by a fund called the Kemper Funds. Kemper Funds don't even no exist longer, anymore. Yeah. I think they were bought by Scudder, and I don't think Scudder exists anymore. I, I think they're now think so. DWS. But Scudder, I mean, Kemper was known for on the back of Money Magazine and a lot of these magazines having this mountain chart. And it looked like there was a, um, a stick figure with a, with a little walking stick looking like he was climbing this mountain. And it would go up and up and up and up. And it would show that if you had invested your money when this fund started in 1951 or 55, and you held it until 1991, look how much money you have, would have. And I asked in that meeting, I raised my hand, and I said, how many shareholders does Kemper have that might have done just that? Because as we all know, life happens. It's rare that somebody keeps money for any type of investment, whatever it might be, there are things that come up along the way that you typically need to liquidate and take some of that money out for whatever your goals are as well. I mean, you know, we focus on uh, retirement goals more than anything else. But once you reach retirement, you've got to start taking distributions. Right. And that mountain chart answered the question, sim answered the statement, simplicity makes you money. That's right. If you had stayed invested, Invested for all that time, simplicity, you would have made money. But the average person can't live with that because we had right. lots of ups and downs. Complexity makes you, what was that? What, make, makes, makes you sound smart. Complexity makes you sound smart where people are saying, oh my God, my investment dropped. I got to get out of this and buy something else and in and out. Right. Because the true answer to the question at Kemper was they didn't have a single person, not a single one that they could show us that it invested their money here at the bottom and went all the way to the top and never took any money out right. and never added any more money. It doesn't happen. Right. So what we learned over time when I went back to these conferences time after time after time, saw all these fund companies there, there was one thing that changed in that exhibit hall <laughs> with the exception of the names of some of the firms that were being gobbled up. The only other thing that changed was the people that represented those fund companies we're standing behind a different table. That's it. Now they were peddling somebody else's product. And so I came up with this statement that I've said 
forever. A fund is a fund is a fund. No person that represents a fund wants to tell you that when they're out selling, but privately, they know it to be true. Because the biggest mistake that we make as investors is try to make things complex. We That's need right. to keep things simple. And even the strategy of getting in and out of the market when the market's going down and the market's going up, those are complexities that you don't need. You, because you never know when the market has hit bottom except in hindsight. Nor do you know when it's hit the top, except in hindsight. I can't tell you how many times a client will ask us, well, how many times will you be trading in my portfolio? What will you do when the market drops? How will you react to that? Marion, how do we answer those? We say, we, as we check to be sure that you have a well-allocated portfolio, that it was designed according to your goals, designed appropriately, for you, and as long as that still holds true, we make no changes in the portfolio. Yeah. Not necessary. And what would be a reason where we would make a change, Mary? The, the reason we would make a change is potentially some asset class or some type, some part of the market grew tremendously over the course of a year. And something else, let's say, you know, certain growth stocks grew really nicely value stocks or dividend paying stocks didn't do so well. We would want to balance it out. So that's what we do. Or maybe stocks had a good year, bonds didn't. But that's a rebalance. You balance it out. That's not get out, get in. No. Right? Because we don't know where the market's going next. Nobody does. There are also a number of other factors, of course. If a manager leaves or retires or whatever, sure. a reason to consider that. But we have to right. consider taxes along the way. Exactly. If the manager is trading within their fund more rapidly than we would like to see them trading, we may also look at that. Yeah. There's a variety of reasons. But for the most part, we're going to keep it simple. You'll have an allocation of stock-based investments, an allocation of bond-based investments, a little bit of money in cash. We're going to understand where everything else is in your financial profile, where money comes from, what money's coming in, what money's going out. But we're not going to try to hit home runs. And what you're going to need and when you're going to need it That's from right. the accounts. Yeah, Some exactly. of the most successful investors are famous for what is called hitting lots of singles and doubles. That's right. Remember, when you watch baseball, the best home run hitters generally also have the greatest number of strikeouts. That's what happens when you try to hit for home runs. That's what we call financial advice in a language you can understand. If now is the time for you to get serious about your financial planning and investment management needs, I hope you'll give us a call. 978-531-8108. That's 978-531-8108. Or if you'd like to get our free weekly newsletter that comes out every Friday, 1030 in your mailbox, in your inbox, not the mailbox at the end of your driveway, in your inbox, <laughs> go to our website, FriedmanFinancial.com. That's Friedman. Two E's and a D. Financial.com. That's going to do it for us this week. If you're around, swing by the Top Steel Fair. I'd love to see you. Yeah. If not, we'll see you again next week with more financial advice in a language you can understand. You've been watching Dollars and Cents. Have a great day. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. During today's episode of Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial, your host may have discussed specific financial planning and investment ideas that are for general information only and not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations. Please remember that investing involves risk and may include loss of principal. Always consult a certified financial planner professional, qualified attorney, or tax advisor prior to investing to determine what is appropriate for you. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA, SIPC.